Right, and finally the big theorem, the most important theory, theorem of today's lecture and probably the whole course. Um, uh, so we recall that we have a differential equation that looks like this, y prime equals some function of t and y, where y is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable. And we have our initial value problem. Recall that the right-hand side is supposed to be continuously differentiable. And suppose that the domain of the right-hand side of our differential equation is some uh, d, which is an open set in R2. All right, uh, so first we assume that um, our uh, right-hand side of the differential equation is defined in some open rectangle. It means that this open rectangle uh, t when t is, sorry, from alpha to beta, let me write it down, uh, when t is from alpha to beta, and y is from gamma to delta, this would be a subset of t, subset of the domain. Uh, it is more convenient to think in terms of rectangles, because then uh, if we have a rectangle, then um, t and y are kind of independent from, from each other. So we can talk about um, values of t where the um, solution is defined and values of y where the right-hand side of the differential equation is defined, right? So further, suppose that, uh, of course, the initial um, condition is a certain point on the plane ty and it must belong to the domain. So what we want to say is that this point also belongs to this uh, rectangle, so the point T0, Y0, belongs to the rectangle. So, uh, then, the conclusion of the theorem is that there exists a probably smaller interval. So notice that there is a, an interval alpha prime, beta prime, that contains the point T0, but it may be smaller than the interval um, from alpha to beta. And s on this interval, a solution of the differential, of the initial value problem exists and is unique. Right, so exists means that there is some function that satisfies uh, the differential equation, and unique means that there is only one such function. So let me demonstrate um, what I mean. So here is a very complicated uh, differential equation. So here it is not separable. The right-hand side contains both um, y and t. And m moreover, the right-hand side, notice that uh, the domain of the right-hand side is non-trivial. So here, because of the division by y, um, y cannot be 0. And uh, y plus t, t plus y, cannot be 0 either. Right? So, and if y is 0, this is um, the horizontal, the t-axis, and if t plus y is 0, then this is y equals minus t, so it's uh, the, this slant line. So that, that's why these two, two lines, they are not in the domain, so these are excluded from the domain. So the domain is the rest. Right? So then, but that's the whole domain. The um, theorem that we just formulated is um, kind of about restricting. First, we need to restrict the domain to some interval. So, sorry, to some rectangle. So, imagine that we have some rectangle that is within the domain. So, here is an example of such rectangle. But notice that if you try to, uh, you know, we just... Um, plot a solution of this uh, differential equation that passes through the, this point, then it would look like this. So in other w words, uh, it's not going to, to be defined for all possible values of t in this rectangle. So it, its domain itself is going to be smaller. Right? So for example, we can re restrict it even further. So it, um, as this plot shows, that 
the solution is clearly defined when t is uh, from 1.5 to 2.5. So that's an example. Um, well, that, that's kind of a graphical example, just to demonstrate the theorem. Um, I am not going to prove the theorem in, um, in the, the lecture, although it's not very hard. And the reason is because you're going to do it yourselves in tutorial. So y you are going to construct a full proof of the Picardian and Bleu theorem as a series of exercises. I, I hope it's going to be exciting. So anyway, um, uh, let me give you a couple of more examples on um, initial value problems and uh, domains of solutions. So the, probably the most Im the important um, lesson that we can learn from uh, the Picardian and Love theorem is that um, the domain of the solution of a nonlinear differential equation could be smaller than the domain of the differential equation itself. Like here, for example. So here, if you look at the right-hand side of the differential equation, then um, because of the division, y cannot be zero. But there is no restriction on t. So the question, is it, when we solve it, will there be a restriction on t, or will the domain of the solution be the whole real line? And um, so first of all, since um, um, y cannot be zero, so it means that y has to be positive, right? Since the initial value of y is positive, so it means that y has to be positive because it cannot cross the the, the zero level. So then, um, this is an uh, a separable differential equation. So I hope how you you remember how to solve it. So when you separate the variables and integrate, you you get this. So then, uh, once th this is done, so you need to uh, use the initial condition to solve uh, for, for C. And then you get that C is zero. But then, if you solve for, for Y, it means that Y of T uh, is the square root of 8T minus T squared. Well, so let us think uh, a little bit more about this. So 8T minus T squared. So the, there is a square root. So it means that the expression inside the square root, 8T minus T squared, it has to be non-negative. Otherwise, the square root is undefined. Right? So t times 8 minus t is bigger than or equal to 0. And then if you uh, try to the two zeros so of the, the this expression as 0 and 8, 0 and 8, and then um, t times 8 minus t is going to be probably negative here, positive here, negative here. So hence, it is positive on the interval from, sorry, from uh, 0 to 8. And again, since the domain must be an open interval, that's why I'm not including 8 and 0 there themselves. Um, a little bit more complicated example. So the idea is that the same, that there is a division by zero, so it means that um, y cannot be zero. Here, for instance, um, uh, y has to be negative, right, because the initial value of y is negative. So then when you, we separate variables and integrate, we're going to get um, the left-hand side is a cube. And then we can solve for c using the initial condition. So I hope, yeah, um, I hope you remember how to do it. Anyway, if you don't, try to figure it out yourselves. If you don't get the, the same answer as I do, then please post a message on the discussion board. So um, it seems that um, when you solve for y, then the right hand, the, we, we will get a cube root of something. But um, is it all? And notice that. Um, here, there is no, since the, this is a cube root, we don't have this um, problem of, of the square root when the um, expression that we take in the square root of must be non-negative. So cube root does not have the, this issue. So cube root can be taken of any number, positive or negative. So which means that 
um, if, if we just look at this expression as um, just something, an abstract function, then each domain would be a whole real line. But notice that um, y must be negative. It means that for t to the 4 minus plus 4 t square minus 8 is going to be negative. And then if you solve the, this inequality you will see that the answer is the interval must be from negative 1 to 1.